Welcome to the fish tank again. <laughs> This message is be terrified. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. And they increased in number, living in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Now, you do a study on the word fear, fear of Adonai. Adonai means the boss. It's important to discern in any situation there's somebody who's Adonai. Obviously God is Adonai, the Holy Spirit is Adonai, but there are also peoples who are held more responsible. Look at Acts 20 to 22. Here's Paul heading for Jerusalem getting prophetic word and warning that he shouldn't go because the Holy Spirit showing that real trouble awaits him there. And Jesus said, if they persecute you, run away, stay safe. And so there's a conflict going on. But Paul is Adonai in the situation, and they're giving encouragement for him not to go to Jerusalem. Fear of Adonai, fear of disobeying the one who's in a position of authority, wisdom, eldership, etc., etc. And I'll tell you, slogging through all the it is written has definitely given me a very amazing perspective. So, be afraid. Number one, be afraid of the terrible consequences of your easy life. If you can look into a computer, if you can see these things, you are not in a third world situation. And you actually have the ability to find what your responsibility is. But our problem tends to be we like to do those things that please us. And we can just brush the tough teachings of Jesus right off the table. So, the one thing, as I've been saturating in the excellent presentation of the last Reformation, is one thing. If the super rabbi, Rav Shaul, who really knew his stuff, I mean, he knew his stuff well enough to put people to sleep. That means to kill pe people. We don't actually die. Your soul stays alive. So if you're stoned, if you and the person that you had sex with are stoned, remember, it's not just the woman that gets stoned to death. It's the man and the woman who commit adultery get stoned to death in front of the building where they were intimate. So if the whole community puts to sleep two people and a potential baby in the woman, which was me. I was the baby. My daddy was married with four children and a pregnant wife when he got my mom pregnant. Now, if he had been, if he and my mom had been put to sleep, I wouldn't have gone through 20 years of shame, confusion, etc., etc. And it doesn't mean that if a person is stoned to death, they are whatever going to hell. Because God evaluates the entire life and all of the pressures and all the realities. I mean, the great and terrible day is going to be great and terrible because we are going to be shocked to find out how God has evaluated some people who were born and raised in squalor and difficulty. So if you can see this thing, you are in an atmosphere of great riches and great abilities I mean, you can sell everything you have, walk away, and re restart a brand new business life if you want to. Some people don't have the ability to just do that. So being 
deeply concerned about the responsibility that we all have to care for ditched kids in their distress and care for ditched women in their distress and not imitate the same bad behavior as the peoples around us. Remember, James, the half-brother of Jesus, James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. True ordered behavior, true good practice, true religion that God considers pure and excellent is this. Watch your mouth, care for ditched children in their distress, care for dumped women in their distress, and do not imitate the bad, sloppy, lazy, complacent, wrong behavior that's all around you in the church and in everywhere else. But the church and your little posse have the heaviest influence on you. So as I see you making your presentations, Torben, the one thing that I think of is Paul warning night and day with tears. Please understand that the two genders are very different. Understand that independent power woman, independent power woman, independent power woman is not the way of the Garden of Eden. God never meant for a woman to be out of the balanced beauty of a house or a care or, I mean, her, she's, she's like the wind in the sails. If you look at Isaiah, the end of three and the beginning of four, you see that seven women will take hold of one man in order to take away our disgrace. That one of the biggest disgraces of a female human being is she is not seen as helping the house of a man knowing that the men are so much more harshly judged than the women are, is a thing that very few people discern. Men have responsibility. Men have responsibility to teach the family with good cheer and lightness and freshness and to shelter and care for the body and the mind of the woman and the bodies and minds of the children. The man is held responsible. And the woman has rights. She has rights to be in a safe house, a safe team. People in the church gatherings don't even care to make sure that each woman is set in the care of male human beings, brotherhood, in real day-to-day -day life. God designed, there was, there, was no, there was no free agency of female human being in the Garden of Eden. And there was, there was no man who did not have a deep responsibility. They, they didn't teach me about gender. Be afraid, be deeply concerned. Read 1 Corinthians 11. It's really intense. For the rabbi to say, from now on, if you guys don't strip the covering off of your head, that's what this is. This is actually handmade seat seats. This is a handmade plain, a handmade plain talit, a prayer shawl. You might might sound goofy, but <laughs> the early Christians had these. And the men did not do the study and the reading and the prophesying with their heads covered anymore because the veil was torn and we can go, hi, God, through the blood of Jesus, we can just come in and say hi to you. And the women come in side by side with us. They weren't allowed in the temple. They were not allowed in the temple. They come straight into God's presence with the gesture of the veil over their heads showing that they know that they are more powerful than all the high priesthood because they're coming into God's Father's, Yahweh's presence 
by the blood of Jesus and and with a gesture of balance between the genders with the with the veil. If you look at the early pictures in the walls of the catacombs of early disciples, there's women with hairdos that clearly have a four-cornered garment with little fringes on them in their prayer and worship time. Clearly, they have enough hairdo that they're not having some kind of bonnet or something on their head all the time. But when they come into worship to pray and to prophesy, no woman should speak, chit-chat her opinions but rather should, she should cut back on communications unless she knows that it is only the Holy Spirit in prayer or prophesying. Because the woman knows that she's going to be like Eve, she's going to be like Jezebel, and she's going to be like Vashti. Those are her tendencies in the flesh. And the man is going to be like Ahab. He's not going to say a darn thing. He, the man's going to be like Adam. He's not going to speak up when he knows what's right. The man is going to be like King Saul. And he's not going to follow all the details of what God is asking him to do. He's going to kind of make up his own religion that pleases the people. And Solomon is be going to become so wise about everything from God to physiology and gender and everything He's going to start exalting the greatest physical gift, which is the woman, and being misled by the women. Um, and, I mean, if we don't study, get afraid of the characteristics. Get afraid of the characteristics, the negative characteristics of your gender type. And put them on the wall. And be concerned. Be afraid. Fear the consequences be terrified of the consequences of fooling around with the rules and the responsibilities and the requests of the God who's really God. And if if we don't do our research, the Holy Spirit is not going to come and tackle us and say, hey, read this. If it is written and we're not checking into the it is written, the Holy Spirit may not say a thing. But a prophet may come by and say, look, God's saying you're doing too much of this and not enough of that. <laughs> so, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. They increased in numbers in excellence, living in the terror of the consequences of going against God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit at the same time. Think about Ananias and Sapphira and realize that cancer and all kinds of other stuff are those types of consequences. Worn day and night with tears. Please don't be like this world. The church has been saturated in worldliness, worldliness and you need to shine a light on every single thing that is not the thing. Study the early Christians and stay high in the Holy Ghost. And confession of all of your inner stuff in a family setting, a closed family setting, not in some big cattle call setting, is essential. It's essential. It's essential. It is the way that Jesus taught the apostles. Admit your faults. Be honest regularly with the kids and with everybody.